Welcome to Fairlawn Avenue Church on this 18th day of December. It is the fourth Sunday in Advent. Thank you for worshiping with us. From wherever you find yourselves today, you are welcome here. I am actually filming this on Thursday and I'm sitting in the entryway of a small Anglican church in my neighborhood. It is a cold, blustery winter day in Toronto with hail getting ready to turn to snow. I'm in the entryway because Advent's time of waiting is nearly over, but we aren't at Christmas yet. We are at the inner door though. I'm here also because the child that was born was born in a cave with animals and a feeding trough for a bed, inside but still outside. And on a day like this, we are mindful of the many in our city of all ages who live under bridges, in shelters, in tents, and doorways. If you are like me, this third Christmas of world uncertainty is no less compromised or uncertain than in 2020 or 21. Financially, things are tighter, and the world in general is more anxious and fractious. It is the 298th day of the Russian-Ukraine war. COVID is not through with us, and people are choosing between food and heat. Into such a world, in another time and place, there was a child born. Into the world of a cruel empire and refugees and great, great uncertainty. Into a world in need of love and in need of care. We too are in such a world our beautiful spinning blue planet. Our faith story today is about Joseph, husband of Mary, stepfather to Jesus, a quiet man put on a world stage. Today, we light the fourth candle in Advent, the candle of love. The season of Advent brings us hope in the promise of a world of peace, where people can rejoice as one in the world's abundance. Love is one of the words of Advent. It inspires the human community to reach out in all our diversity and unity to fulfill the promise of new life that God offers to all people. There came a time when people experienced God's love and God's way in the promise given to a young woman. Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart, the Gospel of Luke tells us. What does love feel like and look like in the world today? Advent is the beginning of this new world, a better world, where you and me and all of God's creation are treasured and loved. Amen. Hear these gathering words. We light four candles, or a hundred, or a thousand more, whatever it takes, 
to remind ourselves to live in love. As ordinary and gentle as the holy welcome that turns the world upside down comes hope, peace, joy, and love to illuminate our Advent. We will light candles this Christmas, candles of joy despite all the sadness, candles of hope where despair keeps watch, candles of courage for fears ever present, candles of peace for tempest-tossed days, candles of grace to ease heavy burdens, candles of love to inspire all our living, candles that will burn all year long. Let us pray. Delight in us, God. Be and be in our hope, our peace, our joy, and our love, and our wonder. Open our eyes to your presence in us and with us, renewing your creation. Help us to be who you call us to be. Amen. I want to introduce the scripture from Matthew with a poem by U.A. Fanthorpe, an English poet and practicing Quaker. The poem is called B.C. A.D. This was the moment when before turned into after and the future's uninvented timekeepers presented arms. This was the moment when nothing happened only dull peace sprawled boringly over the earth. This was the moment when even energetic Romans could find nothing better to do than counting heads in remote provinces. And this was the moment when a few farm workers and three members of an obscure Persian sect walked haphazard by starlight straight into the kingdom of heaven. This is a poem where nothing out of the ordinary happened. A human child was born in humble circumstances like many before him and since. And yet at the same time, they placed the place they walked into haphazard by starlight was no less the kingdom of heaven we can end up there too. Our reader for this morning is Elaine McCarthy. Listen carefully to these well-known words as she tells us the story. Listen for God's breaking into this time and this place. Matthew 1, 18 to 25, the birth of Jesus the Messiah. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. But just when he resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel had commanded him. He took her as his wife, but they had no marital relations until she had given birth to her son, and he named him Jesus. Amen. I have to say right off that there's a world of difference between Matthew's bare bones nativity so spare that calling it a story seems like pushing it, and Luke's lush populated stories. One would be hard pressed to make a Christmas pageant out of Matthew's parsimonious telling. 
Where is the color? Where's the pageantry? Where are the stars and the shepherds and the marvelous imagery of angels singing? Instead, we have a storyteller who seems not willing to embellish the story and a main character who turns out to be a reticent, perhaps even shy man in a quandary. If Matthew is a spare storyteller, Joseph is a character without words. The two seem to go together. What if this is the key? What if Joseph was in fact a man of few words, a man who always sat in the back row and kept his own counsel? That does not mean that he was not wise, that he was not caring, that he had no heart or passion, and that he had no sense of humor, that he did not love deeply and well. What if he was a good listener? What if his whole village knew him to be a loving, caring man? I know a lot of men in my own life who are like that, introverts, not extroverts, thinkers, ruminators, but nonetheless, ones with heart, one whose love is true and strong. Padraig Otama wrote in Shelter, Finding a Home in the World, these words. Christian story of incarnation in the body of a boy, a boy whose ancestors were both famous and infamous, is one that can spur us on towards living with courage that is indigenous to us. To be human is to be in the image of something that is good. An image comes from imagination. To be human is to be in the imagination of God. And the imagination is the source of integrity, as well as cracks. To be born is to be born into a story of possibility, a story of failure, a story of imagination, and the failure of imagination. To be born is to be born with the possibility of courage. Matthew's story is ultimately a story about courage and love. The courage of ordinary men and women and the love that surrounds, inhabits, and wills that courage to be. Matthew does not record Joseph's words. The details may be bare bones, but courageous love was at its ending. Courageous and gentle love. Joseph found himself in an untenable situation where his betrothed is pregnant and as a righteous man, he should denounce her, divorce her. He decides to do this quietly for Mary's sake. And then he has a dream where an angel speaks to him and tells him not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife. Joseph now clearly has a choice to make. A good man, he needs to contemplating, letting go of his goodness, of his righteousness. Perhaps even to learn that sometimes doing the right thing is actually the wrong thing. And just as difficult as a private man, he is being asked to consider a very public act. In essence, Joseph needed to be very courageous. He had to make the right decision. What was Joseph afraid of? That Mary had betrayed him? Or that God has come wonderfully and fearfully close? The story is better for me if it's the latter. And what was it like for Joseph, a quiet, kind carpenter, to love this child, Jesus, day by day, and in doing so, finds himself walking into the light of God? Whether it is Luke's fulsome pageantry or Matthew's spare telling, these nativity stories are about very ordinary people caught in troublesome and extraordinary times. And much is required of these people. They are required to play their parts, to follow dreams, to be willing to believe in the unbelievable and to be able to rejoice even into the midst of their reality 
and in the rejoicing to find hope in shambles and love in unexpected people and places. In the first coming, Madeleine Lang writes this, he did not wait until the world was ready till men and nations were at peace. He came when the heavens were unsteady and prisoners cried out for release. He did not wait for the perfect time. He came when the need was deep and great. He dined with sinners in all their grime, turned water into wine. He did not wait till hearts were pure. In joy, he came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt, to a world like ours. Of anguish, shame, he came, and his light would not go out. He came to a world which did not mesh to heal its tangles, shield its scorn. In the mystery of the word made flesh, the maker of the star was born. We cannot wait till the world is sane to raise our songs with joyful voice, for to share our grief, to touch our pain, he came with love. Rejoice, rejoice. I want to go back to Joseph. Naomi Nye has a wonderfully evocative poem that reminds me very much of Matthew's Joseph. It expresses the stuff of real life experience, the actions that in fact hold together the world rather than tearing it apart. Much like how I imagine Joseph lived his life, one person at a time. This is the poem. Shoulders. A man crosses the street in rain, stepping gently, looking two times north and south, because his son is asleep on his shoulder. No car must splash him, no car drive too near to his shadow. This man carries the world's most sensitive cargo, but he's not marked. Nowhere does his jacket say fragile, handle with care. His ear fills up with breathing. He hears the hum of the boy's dream deep inside him. We're not going to be able to live in this world if we're not willing to do what he's doing with one another. The road will only be wide, the rain will never stop falling. In a world where power and money can buy anything, where the obscenely rich live like gods, Nye offers us this gentle action of a father carrying his child on his shoulder as if it is the most precious cargo in the world. We're not going to be able to make it in this world, she says, if we're not willing to do what he's doing with one another. This is important. It takes one child at a time, one fragile life at a time. And the meaning of the work is found in the doing of it, as the boy's dream echoes inside the father. Joseph would have known the importance of this responsibility to the other. There's this wonderful carol by Anna Briggs called Stay My Child, My Body Sharing. It's Mary singing to her child. This is verse three. Sleep, my child, for love surrounds us. We have not been left alone. Though disgrace and shame may hound us, Joseph stays and shields his own. Lullaby, lullaby, word of God in baby's cry, lullaby. We, you and I, are tangled up in one another for good and for ill. What matters is not so much the fact of our entanglement as our attention to it and our attunement to one another. Our arms together are wider than we think and stronger than we know. We can bring each other light and warmth. We can choose just like Joseph chose. And in the choosing, walk haphazard by starlight straight into the kingdom of heaven. 
May it be so. Amen. Our musical offering for today is Rejoice and Sing This Christmas Morn, words and music by Eleanor Daly, sung by the Fairlawn Senior Choir and Guests. Shepherds arise before the storm, brightly shining from afar. Run to the manger, seek a child, born to the of Mary might. Rejoice and sing this Christmas morn, for Jesus Christ the baby. Would you join with me in a time of prayer? We cannot take bread in any form and forget those who are hungry. We cannot drink the waters of life and forget those who thirst for justice. We cannot look at the manger and forget those who feel abandoned by God. We cannot hear words of peace and forget those people and places ravaged by war. We cannot receive words of forgiveness and forget those against whom we hold a grudge. We cannot glibly speak of community and family and church and forget our divisions. We cannot countenance God's love come to earth as child and forget that Jesus calls us to follow the uncommon road. Into our community, into our world, may the sounds of Advent stir a longing in us, O God. Come again to set us free from the dullness of routine and the poverty of our imaginations. Break the patterns which bind us to small commitments and to the stale answers we have given to questions of no importance. Let the walls of our defenses crumble and make a place in our lives for the freshness of your love. Well lived in the spirit and still given to all who know their need and dare receive it. Amen. And now as children turn to a mother who watches over them, 
let us turn to God saying this, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You are welcome to join us today for coffee chat from 1.15 to 2 p.m. And a reminder of our special Christmas services. There will be a Blue Christmas, the longest night Zoom service on December the 20th at 7 p.m. And an in-person longest night service on December the 21st at 7 p.m. A snowy Christmas family service is on the December the 24th at 4 p.m. And our candlelight communion service on December the 24th will be online at 9 p.m. and in person at 10 p.m. Our Fairlawn United Church website has all these details and much more. And now this blessing. Dancing God passionate leap of creative energy, skipping among the stars, waltzing on rivers, birthing a universe. Dancing God, tumbling from somewhere into Jewish territory, whirling spirit, seeding Mary's womb with alluring divinity. Dancing God, uncontainable grandeur, kicking and rolling in Mary's flesh, while untamed cousin echoes the dance in Aunt Elizabeth. Dancing God, spark of angel's song, shepherds hurrying like whirling dervishes, gasping in awe at a surprising child. Dancing God, still passionate today, dynamic movement of love, wooing our hearts toward oneness and peace in a tear-stained world. Dance on, passionate God. We are your dance now. Teach us the tune. Show us the step. It is nearly Christmas. It is time to dance. Go now in peace. Amen.